Hello everybody and welcome back to Vehicles of War Thunder. In this episode we are checking out a still relatively recent Battle Pass vehicle, the 38M Toldy series of tanks. Before we begin, I want to note that I didn't really have any particularly good matches when I sat down to record the footage in the background, so I'm not really showing the tank off in the absolute best light. Also, some of the footage in the background is going to be fairly stuttery. That is because of an issue with OBS and AMD, where I was basically incapable of recording videos back to back. Uh, if I used any of the GPU encoding methods in OBS uh, without first shutting down OBS via Task Manager. So I was basically forced to uh, record using the CPU encoding method, which is not the greatest for War Thunder because for some reason even though War Thunder doesn't really tax the CPU that much compared to other games, OBS could not keep up with encoding properly. Uh, that issue did eventually get fixed now, but I wasn't going to go and sit down and record another 10, 20 matches or whatever and try to find some good gameplay within that. Um, so just sort of gonna sadly have to suck it up with some stuttery gameplay throughout this and for that I apologize. Uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop right into the history of this vehicle. After the First World War, the Hungarian army was forbidden by the Treaty of Trianon from developing and using tanks. This however did not prohibit the Hungarians from acquiring armored vehicles from abroad in the 1930s. So in the early to mid 1930s, the Hungarian army purchased over 100 tankettes from the Italians. These tankettes were already obsolete as they lacked a turret and sufficient armor protection and armament, having been armed with only two machine guns. In 1936, the Hungarians made an attempt to find a more modern tank to replace or at least supplement the tankettes with more firepower. Three countries were approached for this endeavor, those countries being Italy, Germany, and Sweden. The Hungarians eventually decided on acquiring a single Swedish L-60 light tank in 1937. Once that test vehicle arrived, test trials were conducted on July 1st, 1938. After the tests were successfully completed, the Hungarian general uh, Garandi Novak, probably mispronounced the name, uh, gave a preliminary suggestion for the production of 64 vehicles. These vehicles were to be allocated to two mechanized and two cavalry brigades. After successful negotiations with the Swedish, Hungary managed to obtain a production license for the L60 with some modifications, mostly regarding the armament. An initial production order was placed for 80 vehicles and was awarded to Mavok and Gans. In 1940, an order for an additional 110 vehicles was placed after seeing the success of the lightning-fast German units in May 1940, resulting in the Hungarian army seeing the use for a highly mobile, motorized unit. The second series of production vehicles were marked as the Toldi 2. To get this out of the way now, my sources have some disagreement regarding the differences between the Toldi 1 and Toldi 2. Uh, some of my sources claim that the only difference is that the Toldi 2 was made using domestically produced parts, while others claim that the only difference was that the Toldi 2 introduced improved armor on the front of the vehicle. I think this largely has to do with whether the Toldi 2 was the variant that added the armor, or if it was the Toldi 2A that added the armor. The following segment is running on the assumption that the Toldi 2 was made just using domestic parts, while the Toldi 2A is the one that introduced the additional frontal armor. Both the Toldi 1 and Toldi 2 were armed with the 20mm 36M anti-tank rifle, which is actually just a licensed production of the Solothorn S18-100. This was done because the vehicle was being produced domestically, and so spare parts and ammo were available in sufficient quantities. This rifle did not have the best armor penetration, however, being only 10mm at a 60 degree angle at 600 meters. It was briefly considered by the Hungarians to use a 37mm or 40mm gun, but because that would have required redesigning the turret, it was not adopted for production. The secondary armament was a single 8mm Gabau 34-37 machine gun. The Toldi 1 and 2 were not particularly well protected, having only 13mm thick armor on the front of the hull and 6mm on the top, bottom, and rear. 
The turret was similar, only having 13mm thick armor on the front and sides, and 6mm on the top and rear. This level of armor could be easily pierced by Soviet anti-tank rifles. To improve the Toldi's protection against Soviet anti-tank rifles, a single Toldi, serial number H423, was used to test German armored side skirts. Some other Toldis would also receive this additional armor, however, it was decided that it was best employed on the larger Turan tanks. The Toldi 2A replaced the 20mm anti-tank rifle with a 40mm gun and increased the armor to 35mm of frontal armor. My sources don't say if that was on the turret or the hull. In-game, that additional armor seems to have gone to the gun mantlet, but in-game it's only labeled as 33mm. Uh, some 80 Toldis were modified to this configuration. There is also the Toldi 3, which was much the same as the Toldi 2A. Uh, the only real difference that my sources seem to note is that it also improved the armor to 35mm. Uh, again, sources don't really specify where that is, but I'm going to assume that that is full armor. Only 12 Toldi 3s were built. All variants of the Toldi used a German-built Busing Nag L8V 8-cylinder uh, petrol engine developing 160 horsepower with a weight of 8.5 tons for the Toldi 1 and potentially the Toldi 2 if we assume the only difference is the use of domestic parts. Had a somewhat impressive 18 horsepower per ton and a top speed of 50 kilometers an hour. The Toldi 2A increased the weight of the tank to 9.3 tons, lowering the power to weight ratio to a still somewhat impressive 16 horsepower per ton. The Toldi consisted of a three-man crew. In the front left side of the hull was the driver. To his rear in the turret were the gunner slash loader to the left of the main gun and the commander to the right of the main gun. The commander had a capula for a better view of the surroundings, and if the tank had radio equipment, they also served as the radio operator. To step away from the history real quick, and talk about how this affects the vehicle in-game, because of the cramped layout, if you are firing something with an explosive fill or hitting the tank basically anywhere in the crew compartment is pretty much a guaranteed knockout. If, however, you are firing something without an explosive filler, then if you're facing the tank head-on, you're likely going to want to aim roughly for where the driver is because then your shot should knock out the driver and has a decent chance of potentially knocking out the gunner slash loader, giving you a crew knockout if you are playing in realistic and simulator battles. If the side of the turret is facing you, then you'll want to aim for the turret, which should knock out the gunner slash loader and commander slash radio operator again, giving you a crew knockout in realistic and simulator battles. Now, back to the history. The first time the Toldi series of tanks saw action was during the short April War that lasted from April 6th through April 17th, 1941, and that resulted in the occupation of Yugoslavia, or at least parts of it. For this operation, the Hungarian army deployed their Fast Corps, which consisted of the 1st and 2nd Motorized Brigades, along with the 2nd Cavalry Brigade. The 1st Cavalry Brigade was also part of the 1st Corps, but they weren't deployed. Each of those units had a 18 vehicle strong Toldi company for a total of 54 Toldi tanks. The Toldi did not see much action during this war, however, because many were left unoperational, largely caused by engine problems. Later, it also saw action on the Eastern Front against the Soviet Union between 1941 and 1944. For the war on the Eastern Front, again, the Hungarians deployed the 1st and 2nd Motorized Brigades along with the 2nd Cavalry Brigade. By this time, the number of Toldi tanks in service by those three brigades had increased to 81 vehicles. However, this was still not enough to fill out each brigade, so some 60 of those old Italian-bought tankettes, eh, tankettes supplemented the three brigades. Only July th or On July 13, 1941, elements of the 9th Tank Battalion from the 1st Motorized Motorized Brigade attacked the Soviet positions on the hills near Kemlinsky. Probably mispronounced that. During this battle, one Toldi was hit by a Soviet anti tank gun, immobilizing the tank and killing two of the crew and injuring the commander. In an effort to protect the damaged Toldi, another Toldi took position in front of the damaged tank. While this helped to protect the first Toldi, the second Toldi now became the main target of the Soviet anti tank guns. 
This resulted in the loss of the second Toldi along with its crew, but this saved the life of the commander of the first Toldi. In the following Hungarian attack, the hill was successfully taken after destroying three Soviet anti-tank guns. By late July 1941, the 1st Motorized Brigade had managed to destroy 24 Soviet armored vehicles. Despite this initial success, however, the losses of Toldi tanks began to rise, largely due to mechanical breakdowns. To make up for these losses, an additional 14 Toldi tanks were sent to the front lines in July 1941, along with many spare parts and engines. By August, only 57 Toldi tanks were operational on the Eastern Front, and by October 1941, the Hungarian forces had advanced 1,000 kilometers into the Soviet Union up to the Donetsk River. This resulted in it becoming even harder to supply and reinforce these units, and with losses continuing to increase and an urgent need for repairs, the Hungarians ordered these forces to return home for recuperation and rearmament. Hungarian tank losses were high, with all of the tankettes being lost along with 80% of the Toldis, only 25 of which were damaged in combat, and a far greater number of 62 being lost to mechanical breakdowns. Only a small number of Toldi tanks were available for the 1942 campaign. The fighting in 1941 also showcased the weakness of the Toldi, mostly regarding its armament and armor. The Toldi's main guns stood a chance against the lightly armored Soviet pre-war designs, such as the T-26 and BT-5. It was, however, outclassed against T-34s and the KV series of tanks. The armor was also insufficient and was able to be easily defeated by Soviet anti-tank weapons, including anti-tank rifles. From 1942 onwards, the Toldi was reassigned to be used for reconnaissance, command, liaison, and ambulance roles. A small number of Toldis were also captured and used by the Romanians after the 1944 Royal Coup. There was one prototype made of a tank destroyer that used the Toldi chassis. This prototype was, for lack of a better way to describe it, a Hungarian knockoff of the Martyr series of German tank destroyers, and made use of the Toldi 1 chassis and equipped it with the German Pac 40 75mm anti tank gun, the same gun used on the Martyr series of tanks. This design, however, did not enter service because the chassis could not cope with the additional weight of the 75mm main gun while crossing rough terrain. Only two 38M Toldi tanks are known to have survived one Toldi 1 and one Toldi 2A and are preserved on display at the Kubina Tank Museum in Russia, assuming they haven't been moved since my sources were written. My sources are a little bit on the older side. Now for how this tank handles in-game. The Toldi 2A is a vehicle that should perform quite well at its battle rating. It has an APHEBC round, with a decent amount of pen at 63mm at 10m at a 0 degree angle. Obviously, I'm using absolute best case scenario, because it's just a nice easy number to compare against. The biggest issue with this round, however, is the lack of explosive power. While it should be able to one-shot many light and medium tanks, particularly smaller ones, at and around its battle rating, it struggles with larger vehicles in particular like the LVT or SU-122, which have much more spread out crew compartments compared to many of the light and medium tanks at about the 1.3 battle rating. You also have access to an APBC round that brings that same penetration value up to 73 millimeters. I've not used that round in an actual game, however, because I just don't think the extra penetration is really worth losing the explosive filler of the APHEBC. Honestly, there is not a whole lot to say about this vehicle in particular. Uh, it's not a god tier vehicle. But it's also not garbage, which is always a nice thing. As a result, it it's balanced in many ways. It's pretty easy to kill, but it also has a pretty easy time killing a lot of the stuff it'll go up against. Again, with a handful of exceptions like the LVT, SU-122, uh, some of the early Panzer threes you can potentially go up against. Um, those have a little bit more spread out crew for um, how small of an explosive filler you have. Um, you're also not particularly likely to ammo rack very many enemies, largely because of the fact that you have so little explosive filler in your APHEBC round. But it's technically possible, and theoretically your APBC round could also 
calls ammo racks. Just without explosive filler, it's often not as likely. But it can happen. So that'll be it for this episode. Like I said, there isn't a whole lot to talk about this vehicle. Next time, I think we're going to go ahead and take a quick time jump to the Korean War and check out the American Sabres. I say the American Sabres in particular because I don't have the Sabres in the other tech trees, and it'll probably be like another year or two um, until I would grind those out realistically. So I just don't think it's really worth um, that because there's no telling if I'm still playing War Thunder in a year or two. And I happen to have some decent matches in the Sabres, so I kind of want to get these out. Um, when I do unlock the other Sabres, I will more than likely make an addendum uh, video similar to what I did with the Hawk 75s. Just a short little one to talk about some of the differences and how that affects how the vehicles handle in-game. Uh, a quick reminder that I do have a Discord, which I highly recommend you join because that is my go-to place for posting about the channel. I also have a Patreon and Streamlabs donation link down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video or any other video on the channel, uh, please consider supporting the channel via one of those two links in particular. The Patreon provides some goodies, such as early access to videos, while the Streamlabs helps the channel out more because I, from what I can tell, uh, should take home a larger cut of any donation uh, but because I don't have a means of easily automating uh, access to uh, my patreon exclusive channel on my discord um, and obviously no real way to share the video outside of the discord for early access I, I don't you don't get goodies if you go with the streamlabs version so the streamlabs is just a I really enjoy your content and I want you to be able to go and be able to justify the cost of buying premium vehicles and event vehicles that maybe don't have tech tree variants or are a variant of a tech tree one but because I like to talk about all variants of a vehicle I can't really do that if I don't have access to the premium or uh, event vehicle variants and so the Streamlabs is sort of that I I don't care about getting early access. I just really want to support your ability to continue making this content. Uh, so they're both down there as options. Pick whichever one you prefer. Like I said, Patreon gets some goodies. Streamlabs helps the channel out more in the long run. Um, Streamlabs does have an option for monthly subs as well as a somewhat recent addition. But that'll be it for this video. I will see you all next time, like I said, when we'll be checking out the American Sabres. But until then, goodbye and farewell.